It's coffee break. Here we are. We watched Deadpool and Wolverine. That is the big thing for this episode. Mm -hmm. There's not much news. We are also covering Batman Cape Crusader, yes. which was on Amazon. Mm -hmm. We watched all that. And we watched both director's cuts of Rebel Moon. Yep. I'm actually super excited to talk about all three of these things. So we're going to review all of those, but first we're going to get through the news really quick. Okay. Okay. If you haven't seen Deadpool and Wolverine, you probably should. If you haven't realized, they're mutants. Yes. <laughs> so it's time for the X-Men to hit the MCU. Finally. Insider reports suggest that the MCU's X-Men reboot will begin filming late next year. Oh. For a release in 2027. Okay. Either fall or uh, winter. Uh-huh. Um, so I guess I'll sit around and wait my, even longer. My bad. Summer longer. or fall. Okay. Yeah. They have two spots there, and one is that Thanksgiving spot that they like to use for Pixar and like, Disney animation. I remember um, Captain America Civil War, yes. the introduction of Spider-Man into the MCU. Oh, that's what you remember it for? Well, during that time, there was a lot of Not buzz. Black Panther. Well, there's many <laughs> things to remember, but during the time, there was a lot of buzz that because they got Spidey, there was like a lot of talks about like now we can start getting the X-Men in here too. Yep. And I patiently waited, and then many years passed, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm still waiting. <laughs> I was thinking about this, and I was like, you know, for the X-Men, just the classic X-Men, not for all mutants, just the X-Men. Mm -hmm. Do a TV show. Yes. Do it as a TV show. It's... Have two seasons where Charles and Scott are building up the team, mm -hmm. have the classic team, maybe throw Jubilee in there. Yeah. Maybe a shadow cat. Yeah. Um, Get some random cool ones. Stop with the Wolverine thing. He's not an X-Men. <laughs> I mean, it works so well. Every cartoon, every, mostly cartoons, they've had like 17 different X-Men cartoons and they've all been good. Yes. So, like, just do that. <laughs> and because you have so many characters, you might as well do an epic television show instead of trying to fit this into two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Or like Deadpool, which came in a little under two hours because of the trailer. Or credits. There has been a, a trend with Marvel specifically. Going down in time. Well, their TV shows, it's like this could have been a movie. There's mm -hmm. so little premise that they're stretching out arbitrarily. But yeah. then like their movies, it's like this should have been a TV show. There's so much more we're trying to cover here. We needed more time. So I don't know if they just got everything all flipped, turned upside down, or what. But I would be so into it. <laughs> this is the third uh, rendition of the X-Men on big screen. Jeez. I mean, that sounds like a lot, but then you remember how many Batmen there are. <laughs> yes. Yes, there are many Batmen. Um, another rumor is that the Batman... Oh, speaking of, <laughs> I didn't even know. Um, they're going to do another spinoff show. So, like, the Penguin. Oh. There were two other spinoff shows with this. Now, here's some confusion. They were going to do an Arkham series, and they were going to do a Gotham PD series. Okay, one of them, infinitely more invested in. Yes. The Arkham series was... They're both canned, but the Arkham series will now be a DCU thing. Okay. And it'll be animated. Sure. I'm <laughs> still into that. It, it fits better over there, and I totally believe them for that idea. Mm -hmm. The Gotham PD thing, Wait. I mean... Remind me real quick. Which one's DCU? The new one that hasn't begun yet. Cool. I'm so into it. <laughs> uh, DCU begins this December with Creature Commandos. Nice. Which is an animated show. I just really like Arkham. And I like the idea of all the villains being in Arkham. Yeah, and something's like, haunting them. Yeah, dealing with problems. Not like running around trying to save the world, like how Suicide Squad usually is. Yeah. Like, I, 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 <laughs> I'm that boring person who doesn't care about when the superheroes are superheroing. I like the characters. <laughs> Especially Batman and his villains. I think they're very interesting people. If I'm correct, the Suicide Squad is an Argus, while Arkham is its own institution. Okay. So when you're dealing with Argus, you're going to deal with that shenanigans. Yeah. Which also Amanda Waller is in charge of. Also, Argus, great name for their... Agronauts? What? Is that not what it was based on? No, Argus, that's the Greek myth of the guy who had all the eyes all over his body. 
Oh, so they're always watching you. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff. <laughs> um, but those two got canned, except for the Arkham one, which will be DCU. I can't imagine it. There is a new one apparently, but they haven't revealed what it is. Oh. Now I was also reading before the Penguin debuts on Max September nineteenth. Very soon. September eighteenth. For mm-hmm. one day only, you can go back to the theaters and spend four more hours with Robert Pattinson. Wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't think I'm going to be in the theaters for that one, but I am going to rewatch the movie before. That was the best theater experience I've ever had. It was. And we had a weird Deadpool experience. It was fine. It I, was, we got what we paid for. I <laughs> just learned to accept that that's what it was. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, well, that's what happens on a Tuesday afternoon, right? <laughs> and then Zack Snyder. <clears throat> Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead universe is dead. What? No Netflix way. Netflix is not going to move forward with it. He's really desperate to have a sort of like franchise. Yes. You can tell. Well, he tried to build two of them for them. The he... Army of the Dead uh-huh. and uh, Rebel Moon. Mm-hmm. And also, like, he's dabbled with, like, Justice League and stuff. You can tell he wants to do his own thing with his own world and his own... Way. Like, like, like franchise world-ending thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's a very boring individual. <laughs> He's got all the great ideas there. His execution is what the problem is. Not every good director is a good storyteller. He Okay, if he trimmed the fat, we could have had something else. Anyways. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I think that's kind of cool of Netflix because, I mean, it's in my review Mm -hmm. of Rebel Moon Part 1. And Part 2 came out last week. Mm -hmm. Or this week, my bad. It was a very funny video. If you... (laughs) don't care about it you should still watch it because it is a fun review Mm -hmm. i I do poke a lot of fun at them um but when i was talking about army of the dead building up to why rebel moon exists Mm -hmm. i talk about how nobody watched them and nobody was willing to talk to me about them because they didn't watch them yeah and it's like well yeah no no duh kill that project it was a really boring weird bland project he also another one with too many characters and not all of them really got to do anything yeah you know going back through and doing the footage on that because it came out years ago Mm -hmm. so i've already forgotten most of the film but watching the trailer and cutting it up and stuff right i totally forgot about the queen zombie yeah and she had a male counterpart Mm -hmm. and they were like trying to breed or something he keeps trying to do this like really big stories yes with like a lot of elements and lore and backstory and a lot of different characters with all their own lore and backstories and i think he would find better success if he narrowed his focus down a little bit Mm -hmm. like simplified things one or two strong characters not seven weak ones (laughs) yeah well that was all the news i could find that i actually cared about well that's okay we're here to talk about the stuff we watched throughout the week i'm excited where are we starting so we're gonna start with box office news okay yeah, because this is box office trolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's no brainer that uh, Deadpool and Wolverine is number one. Yes. They have reached 900 million as of the recording of this. Um, and they will reach 1 billion at the end of this next weekend. Yeah, they have surpassed everything. <laughs> Inside Out 2 set a lot of like records. And then Deadpool and Wolverine beat all those records. <laughs> yes, as they should have. Yes. Twisters is number two. Good for them. Number three, Trap. I, already? That's uh, M. Night Shyamalan's new one. Oh, I heard it's really bad. Well, it's M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> I, I, I watched a video where someone... You want to talk smack about Zack. He did there. Uh-huh. <laughs> someone was breaking down the plot, and it just makes no sense. It's so weird. Like, the the he's a serial killer, but he has a daughter who's like interested in like the in-universe taylor swift basically yep but he like wants to kill in-universe taylor swift so he blackmails her and then it just doesn't make sense because like she should have way more power (laughs) and like security detail (laughs) weird news uh taylor swift had to cancel her shows in venice oh i heard about this because they made like two arrests because there's a terrorist plot going on with her well so uh, Oh no. Uh, fiction becomes reality. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Fiction becomes nonfiction. That sucks. 
I hope she's okay. <laughs> she is fine. Yeah. She canceled. But still, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> uh, number four, Despicable Me 4. Cool. Number five, Inside Out 2. Okay. Number six, Harold and the Lame-Tastic Cran. Yeah. This movie is critically panned. It looks horrible. Uh, I saw no one going to go see it no. when we saw Deadpool and Wolverine. It was so embarrassing. They had this whole display yep. with like a purple crayon and everything and no one no one cared. No. Nope. Not a single person well, cared. Well, I was thinking that was for a premiere. We're there on a Tuesday and the premiere was Thursday. I guess. I saw the headline that it made worse numbers than Inside Out's two eighth week. In... <laughs> <laughs> We're comparing the eighth week to the first week. That's sad. It just looks so bad and ugly. It looks like a 2000s movie, but with a horribly aged Zachary Levy. Yeah. I don't know what happened to his face. It doesn't look good. <laughs> Probably started eating donuts since he's not Shazam anymore. It looks plasticky. <laughs> uh, number seven, Long Legs. Number eight, A Quiet Place Day One. Okay. Number nine, The Firing Squad. I have no idea. Nope. And number 10, Ponyo. Ponyo? I saw a clip from Ponyo. I never knew Ponyo's dad was voiced by Liam Neeson. (laughs) Okay. I was watching. I was like, who is this voice? Why does he sound like Aslan? (laughs) I looked it up. I was like, oh my God. (laughs) It's (laughs) Qui-Gon. You know him by another name. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's dive right in. Batman, Cape Crusader. Yes. if uh, The most I saw on casual people's timelines was just noticing that Oswald Co- Co- Cobblepot... Co- is Oswaldo. Yes, now the penguin is a girl. Who is only in one episode, the yeah. very first episode. Super disappointing. Uh, <laughs> plot was foiled by AKA Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, what we're really just introduced is that Batman and the cops aren't talking to each other. I think this was the beginning of Batman. Because there, there was a lot of them being like, there really is a guy in a bat suit mm-hmm. kind of talk. It was. It was... <sighs> it was his year one. This was fine as a cartoon. I did not like the art style. No, so the art style is in the vein of uh, Batman the Animated Series, which is the 90s one. Yes. Where it took uh, a lot of um, Tim Burton's ideas of gothic Gotham Mm -hmm. with a uh, 40s vibe. Yes. And some futuristic elements. Yeah. I mean, it felt like they were mimicking the style, but without any of the charm. Yes. Or with, like, classic Batman from the 90s. They had those style limitations because of, like, budgetary reasons. Yep. But they would go so far to stretch the limits of what these limitations could be, mm-hmm. especially with, like, the villains and stuff and random character designs. With this one, everyone felt, with the, uh, the exception of a handful of characters, everyone felt very boring and simple and felt more like a lazy decision to cut corners rather than a creatively interesting one when bruce and harvey dent are in a room with other male characters Mm -hmm. if they're not talking you have no idea which one's which no they all look the same there was a lot of characters that i had a hard time really telling them apart everyone has like except for oh what's her name Montez? Montoya? Montoya. Except for Montoya. Wait. Montez. The, the Martinez. Martinez? Yeah. What's her first name? Officer. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Except for her. Basically, everybody is just like a white person with dark black hair. Yep. And she's like the only person with a little bit of melanin. Well, there's Gordon. I suppose there's Gordon. And Babs. Yeah. Yes, that is true. That's it. Those are all yep. your... <laughs> Alfred's fat. Alfred was fat, which was he a... didn't work for the Waynes. He just was there and adopted this boy. I guess so. Who woke him up in the middle of the night to it... tell him he's going to kill everyone. It was very weird. A Batman <laughs> looks a lot like Superman without his outfit on. I kept being like, there's Clark Kent. <laughs> he doesn't have blue eyes. I guess so. Everyone had the same dark black eyes. Everyone looked the same. Yeah. Not even like like a blonde anywhere a redhead you know someone with a slightly unique like nose shape or or chin just everyone looked the same (laughs) yeah that was a bummer uh the next two episodes were about clayface 
Yeah. Which, so, uh, the Penguin's idea was to get this giant cannon to start just shooting down people at yeah. a distance, right? It, it it's was... a crazy idea, but it, it was going to work in some capacity. Very Penguin, I'll give them that. <laughs> Clayface, we start talking about the story of a failed director, because he's ugly. Yeah. And how he spent his life's fortune on this one guy to make him some snake oil, basically, to fix his face. Mm-hmm. Which ends up horribly disfiguring him into a clay face. And he goes around pretending to be other people, killing them. Mm-hmm. And then, what, Batman killed him? It's I don't think he killed anybody. He did arrest people regularly. Or, like, he would... Okay, a lot of the show was... Batman's not there at all. We instead watch Martinez. I'm going to call her Martinez. We're, I mean, we instead watch Officer Martinez. Well, just try every name, <laughs> and then eventually one of them will be right. And she solves the whole case. Yes. And then Batman swoops in at the very end to, like, punch the bad guy. And then they're like, Bats was here. It's the Batman. And it's like, where were you? <laughs> I thought it was a Batman show. We spent way more time with, like, Barbara and... The officer. Then we do with Batman. Yes. Bruce is barely in it, too. Lucius is a lawyer. Yeah. And, that yeah, that's all he has, huh? I think he was in maybe two episodes. Yeah, Lucius. Uh-huh. Every, it was very, very much like an, a monster of the week. Yeah, well, it gets weird because... Penguin is a person. You can physically hurt them, right? Yeah. Clayface is a person, but There's... he's got some weird sci-fi thing going on. They do a couple of science stuff. He would later go on, Batman would go on to fight um, that one guy. What is his name? What's his power? The spiral face dude. Oh, it's not... I was. Is his name Automatopoeia? Yes. That yes. is his name? I'm pretty sure it's Automatopoeia, man. That, that was the worst episode. It was so boring. Yeah. <laughs> um... Which, yeah, now we got guys with powers. Mm Mm-hmm. To back to thugs. He's beating up thugs. And then there's a random episode. Yeah. (laughs) And it's probably episode five or six. But I think it's five. And Batman straight up fights a fucking ghost. It's just, it's just a whole ghost. It's, yeah, there's nothing else to it. It's a ghost. All, and like, a DC has magic. You know? Yeah, it was just a weird way to show us. It's nothing before or after this moment implied supernatural or metaphysical elements was going to be a thing. Like, even, like, Nightingale shows up. Yeah. And she has kind of magic powers, basically. Like, she can suck out your soul. But the way they say, they talk about it in the episode, both her brother and the doctors later, are like, she has a unique condition, implying there's some sort of medical explanation to it. But this one was just a ghost. (laughs) So how does he defeat him? He destroys a contract, and he basically lures him out into a vial that he got from some random guy who also knew magic. Yeah. And then he gave that vial to the guy and we never talk about it again. Yeah, yeah. Alfred got, like, pseudo-possessed for a second. Yep, that was weird. That was weird. You can find pictures of that. I'll I'll give them this. It was a memorable episode. Better than the Onomatopoeia one. It's just weird. It was weird because a lot of it was all, like, Monster of the Week type deal. But the overarching plot was Harvey Dent with his Two-Face thing. So Harvey is the DA and he's running for mayor. Yeah. But he's in with the mob. Yeah. Where he ends up screwing up that deal and they throw acid onto his face, disfiguring him. Yes. He goes off on his psychotic rampage. He's the final villain of the whole show. There's only eight episodes. It's so boring. The last two are dedicated to really just Mm Two-Face. He never really became Two-Face. He, yeah, he teetered on the edge of it. Yep. And then uh, he does get shot and killed. Yep. And Batman saves the day. Batman does use a gun, but he doesn't hurt anyone. My favorite thing is seeing people being like, this is a disgrace to Batman, because they have that like one screenshot of him holding, holding the, the gun. Pistol, yeah. And everyone's like, way to just prove you haven't watched the show. Because <laughs> yeah, I was kind of waiting for him to fire it off. And he does. But it's warning shots. Mm-hmm shows that he is a good enough shot shot he could have killed him if he wanted to five times over yeah but he didn't to really hammer home his point which which is also weird that he knows how to use a firearm well you know 
You gotta learn to aim if you're gonna throw those batarangs and whatnot. Yeah, I think that's a totally different technique. No, I thought uh, okay. So ever ever since the uh, Christian Bale movies came out, yes, everyone has wanted to do their take on Harvey Dent and Two Face, mm-hmm. and every time it's just not. It's just a poor man's version of what that movie already masterfully did, and this one was especially boring. Because his design, like his half burnt face, was so lame. <laughs> his teeth were all messed up. That was kind of gross. I guess, but like Clayface looked worse. <laughs> Clayface, before he got his face melting thing happening, looked worse. <laughs> yes. Uh, Harley Quinn is in there. I think she was the most interestingly executed character. Weird. They Weirdly went, done. Well, this is the only one where they were kind of unique with it. Yes. Like, yeah, they turned Penguin into a lady, but she's still just the same old Penguin. Mm-hmm. This was the only one where they, like, really did something different, and I thought it was neat. She, what, she's locking up people and then brainwashing them to do her bidding? Yeah, she's she is a psychiatrist, and she's using psychosis to, like, manipulate people. Mm-hmm. And that's a neat direction to go. Yeah. A neat outfit. Not sure I would immediately recognize her as Harley if I didn't know any better. (laughs) Even when I see her, I'm like, oh, that is Harley, isn't it? It's the yellow and black. Yeah. Like, uh, the yellow's cool. It's different. It is. But it's faded, so it... It's a mustard yellow. A dirty mustard yellow. Also, like a mustard that you left on the plate for a couple hours outside. Like crusty Dijon. Yep. <laughs> it's also, because everyone has same face syndrome, I could not recognize her Except as... Except Yes, yeah, it's true. I could not recognize her as the doctor. Yeah. Like, I knew she was, they explained it, but like I was looking at her face both in and out of costume, and I'm like, I cannot see the resemblance. What, what killed me was how... Bruce met Harley. Yeah. It's so contrived. <laughs> it's it so was, weird. So there's... This ties... It ties into an episode about Catwoman. Catwoman's design was god-awful. Oh my god. It was so bad. She had a dress. <laughs> yes. Uh, there was a lot of things where you're like, you could have easily got caught or snagged on something. Yeah. You're carrying around too much fabric. She has a cape. A yep. whole cape. <laughs> she made a Catmobile. Uh-huh. That that happened. Yeah. Um. Anyways, what happens is at the beginning of this episode, there's a, uh, the history of Gotham in the museum, mm-hmm. and the Wayne's, his parents' stuff is on display. Yeah. And this one photographer is like taking photos, and he's like, "What?" Well, he says something dumb. He's like. That broad walked down the east side with these pearls? No wonder they got what they got, or whatever. Yeah, and then Bruce just <laughs> decked him in the face. Yeah. And then the next scene, he's in uh, therapy. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like Bruce would have so much money, he'd be like, go away. Yeah, I feel like he could buy his way out of a, also, a minor inconvenience. Also, like as a cop, <laughs> do you really fault Bruce for that? No. I want I want to go against the guy who has a lot of money yeah. and is... You know, clearly his parents were murdered in this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. And this guy's talking shit. I think he, he kind of deserves it. I think it could have, yeah, they kind of definitely introduced the uh, Harleen Quinn, which is her name. Mm-hmm. Um, they could have introduced her much more organically, like if she was just already his therapist, or if he had another therapist and they left or quit, and he had to find a new one. Yep. You know, it just it, a lot of it just felt like things happened for the sake of things happening. Yep. Um, the two bad cops, uh, Flask and God, <laughs> Bullock. Like, like Ted. Oh, Bullock. <laughs> yeah. Bullock is a character. He's in Batman Begins. He's oh. in the comics. Oh. But I don't remember Flask at all. I don't. I, the Gotham PD... It was something I didn't get to say earlier about those spinoffs. Yeah. Super boring. And in, in Batman's universe has, like, so many interesting characters. And not just the magical ones, either. Or the ones with super abilities and costumes. But the the regular boring police is not an interesting part of it. <laughs> well, we also have to stop and realize this concept's been done before. It has. Gotham. Yes. 
and very recently <laughs> whew, that was a tough one i didn't even finish that one i couldn't it was just getting so dumb it was whew, joker was too weird speaking of joker we teased joker at the very end yes and his voice <laughs> <laughs> his voice is very deep you know what i'll give him this it's interesting we've had everyone's done very high-pitched mark hamill-esque yeah. joker voices mm-hmm. They're doing something different. I can appreciate that. It's a fine line between I want to see them. You can, you can't you shouldn't reinvent the wheel with some of these classics. But also, if it's too similar to one we've seen a million times already, it's just boring. Yes. So, uh, do you think they'll get a second season? No. I don't either. <laughs> I don't think enough people watched it. I don't think they should have waited on Joker. Too many things like this will just wait. On Joker. Well, my biggest problem is it's always the second round. This was exactly like Telltale's Batman. Where the first season, I guess is what it was called, was Harvey Dent's stupid story. And then the second was the Joker stuff. Yeah. Just start with Joker. He's the classic for a reason. (laughs) I'm afraid the Batman Part 2 might also fall into this. Though... This time was different. This time was Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just hope they don't keep going that direction. Um, but I don't really know too much about the details of the new movie. I, 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 I'm still waiting on Penguin, I suppose. It's been a long while since the first movie came out. It's been what, two years? Two, three, something like that? Yeah, it's, it's a good amount of time. I guess. I'm now, so used to Marvel with their seven movies a year. <laughs> yeah, well, it takes a while to make good movies. Uh-huh. Rebel Moon, Chapter 1, A Chalice of Blood, and Chapter 2, Curse of Forgiveness. Yes, the director, the illustrious rated R director's cuts. Why is it rated R? There's just a buttload of blood and titties. Yep. <laughs> so many titties. For no real reason. (laughs) Long, drawn-out sex scenes that are so drawn-out that you start to just go, I don't even want to be here anymore. It's, they're, okay, so it's like, they're just too long. (laughs) They are. (laughs) Like, you could just imply. It's fine. It, like, transcends sexiness and just becomes boring. (laughs) Yeah. You're like, I I can get the full thing with just watching porn. Mm Mm-hmm. But, no, it's just drawn-out too long. The blood... I mean, it doesn't really add anything. No. In fact, there were several scenes where I felt like the excess gore took away yeah, from what... Yeah, it was what... layered over the top of it. Mm-hmm. Well, in the first part, you know, when when Noble kills Sindri, the leader of their village, mm-hmm. like, you, he has this, like, wind-up and, like, Sindri's, like, whole body twists because of the hit... And this one, he doesn't move because his, like, cane indents into Sindri's skull. Yep. And it was gorier, but it had way less impact and was way, le- way less interesting. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that. Also, there was one thing that didn't make any sense. What? So, Nemesis is fighting the spider, and in the theatrical version, she cuts the spider and it dies. In the director's cut, she cuts the spider, and then a bunch of spider babies pop out. Mm-hmm. But she was, the spider lady was just talking about how her eggs can't survive because of the pollution. So it's like, what are you talking about? That her children can't. Is that not? So they would just run off to die. Um, maybe. That was how I interpreted that. Maybe. <laughs> the movie begins totally different. In fact, Water Boy, or Water Girl, Sam, mm-hmm. and uh, Soldier Boy, ex-Soldier Boy. Yes. Eris. Yeah. Are actually way bigger characters. At least Eris for sure, because the whole opening is about Eris and his family mm-hmm. on his home planet fighting back the uh, the Empire, yeah. right? And it comes down to this thing where he has to kill his dad. It's brutal. Mm-hmm. It's way drawn out. It takes like 20 minutes before you hit the title. It does take way too long. Um, there's... It, it's fun. It's interesting to see it. You get to see how evil the Empire is. Yeah. And... We get a little more explanation from what these priests are. Mm -hmm. There's like a lot of little things that help build things up actually. And the priests, there's four of them, and they walk around with Atticus or sometimes Belsarius. I noticed that in the flashbacks. Mm -hmm. And one holds a book, which is their book of rites. Yes. And the other two don't do anything. 
And then another one, the fourth one. The dentist. <laughs> holds this, you think it's a picture. Mm-hmm. And it's because we never really got to see what it was. Yeah. In the director's cut, we do. After uh, Eris is forced to kill his father, mm-hmm. Atticus starts digging through his brains. Yeah. And seeing his memories. And I don't know if he was, like, making things up or if he was actually seeing his memories. I think he is actually able to do that. It's weird that they don't. You think he would do that more. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then the priests come up and they rip out one of the the teeth from the dead guy. Yeah. Eris' dad, the king. And they put it into that picture. And you realize this picture, this, in the middle is a picture of... um, Issa. Issa, the princess yeah. of life, right? And then all around it are teeth yeah. in this frame. And they're slowly just building this thing up. It's kind of cool, but also like, why? Yeah, they never explain. And it very as soon as the battle starts in the second one, it just gets exploded and yep. presumably burned up. Never explained. There's a lot of things that's like, that's neat. But why? <laughs> One of the things I didn't understand, they talk about the cane, mm-hmm. which Atticus walks around with, and um, the king had it, mm-hmm. Belisarius has it, yep, yep. but there seems to be different ones. Yeah, because I was like, it's weird that Belisarius, like it's the, like a kingly item, but then Noble, who's only an admiral, mm-hmm. is just waltzing around with his own version. I have theories on it. Uh-huh. But, uh... Yeah, you find out more that this is a very special stick that was from, like, ancients before them. It's like a femur of, like, a great beast or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they use. It's part of their ritual to kill these leaders to take territories. Mm Mm-hmm. They also seem to enjoy uh, kidnapping children. Yeah. Kidnapping children and enforcing innocent people to do violence against their own loved ones. Yep. The break their spirit. Yeah. And, yeah, they're, they're a little more evil than we thought. Yeah. And that's cool. And then we begin the movie. And the movie begins nearly the same way, except for no exposition from uh, Anthony Hopkins. Yes. Uh, much better this way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really like that, especially with the second one, because mm-hmm. it takes two minutes to explain the whole thing. God, it's so and long. And <laughs> in, in Curse of Forgiveness, they cut all that out, because uh-huh. you've already seen it. Uh, small things were changed. Some things were extended. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Mostly, like, added scenes of, like, Jimmy and Eris actually doing things, with growing the harvest... Yep. Very much still being characters. <laughs> yeah, we get to spend more time with the villagers mm-hmm. while uh, Gunner and Cora are away. Yeah. And we see that they are actually making preparations for this. That you're not just sitting around waiting. A little bit of more of their team with Gunner and Cora actually like talking to each other. Yep. It's still minimal, but it's better than the nothing we got last time. <laughs> I felt like her talking to Titus. After they find him, mm-hmm. all wasted. Yeah. That was way more extended out, and you kind of see the pain and emotion that Titus is going through. Mm-hmm. Which explains why he joins them and does all that stuff for Velt. Yes. Um, in general, the sound design was better. Yes. Uh... Editing, the, the color correction was better. The lens is still fucking there. Yeah, it's still an ugly lens. <laughs> it's hard to avoid it. As I, the thing is, like, I, I suppose this version's better than the theatrical, but I really expected them to have bigger changes to the story that would have helped things. Yep. And they don't really do that, especially the second one. The second one's basically almost exactly the same as the first one. See, the curse of forgiveness is not named right. No. No. (laughs) Because I'm not forgiving you for how bad it is. Even the extended is just as bad. Mm -hmm. The extended first part, which I did enjoy the first movie, and now that it's extended out into like four and a half hours or whatever. It feels like it. (laughs) It's better. It is better. You're interested. You're engaged with this world. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, that second one still doesn't stick the landing. It's almost the same damn movie. It's still really clunky. 
their their mission makes no sense. Their backstory session is very heavy-handed and goofy. Mm-hmm. Gunner is still annoying <laughs> and pointless. Gunner is the worst part of that story. He so is. And I don't know why he's our anchor. I don't either. They're like, hey, Gunner, you represent hope. And it's like, no, he doesn't. He represents dumb. <laughs> it's dumb. Yeah, part two for both versions. Mm-hmm. The theatrical and the director's cut. Just a lame movie. A very lame movie that's way too long. <laughs> it was... Uh... There's a point where when you're watching them, you're like, it's just the same movie from now on. Mm-hmm. There's one interesting scene where she talks to the goddess robot thing that's powering the engine's warp portal. It's powering the entire ship. Yeah. Where uh, it's called the King's Gaze. She has like a moment with it where it she's going to blow it up and it has like a mind meld moment where it tells Korra... That she forgives her for killing her because she knows she's going to rescue her sisters. And Mm -hmm. I was like, that's interesting. That was the only thing worthwhile. She said her sister's (laughs) wrath will be her... Revenge? Yeah. Something like that? Retribution? Something? Yeah, something like that. And you're like, oh, there's more of them. Okay. I'm like, if this is a world with, like, giant robot gods, tell me that story. I don't care about this farm town. Yep. (laughs) And then at the very end, there's one scene that did not make the theatrical where we do get to see Belisarius. Mm-hmm. He, he seems, is alive. He seems to be alive yeah. and he's in physical form. Which is really confusing to me. Because, okay, there's some things I caught on to editing the second one and rewatching the second one and just doing all this extensive research on Rebel Moon. Mm-hmm. Whether we get part three or four, I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, <laughs> When they're resurrecting Atticus at the very end of the first movie, there's a glass vial with electricity shooting through it. Uh-huh. And you can see the silhouette of a character standing in it, and it's Belisarius. Yeah. Atticus, he has a flap of fake skin behind his head mm-hmm. where he can plug into his cerebral cortex, right? Yeah. Which tells me he's not human. He's partial human yeah if anything he's either a cyborg or an android yes and he is able to communicate with belisarius this way yeah which means belisarius in some weird way is also not of the physical plane he could be a cyborg or android i would think yeah after he becomes the king or whatever Mm -hmm. he would want to augment himself to become a little stronger yeah it would make sense for him to be our final boss and he's not really fully human yeah then you get to like level up yeah because (laughs) zach's just trying to build a video game it really is (laughs) and that's the thing he needs to know stop making movies and just go make a video game it's true (laughs) all that boring parts where they're just fighting endlessly it'd be a lot more fun if i was playing the game (laughs) yep uh jimmy Jimmy just slaughters everyone. He's Yeah, he's the same as if, last time. <laughs> if you're wondering why his uh, crown is broken, in the extended cut, you'll find out why. Well, he used his antlers in the first one. I guess it was less impressively so. When did he use his antlers? I think at one point in time. No, no. you know what? I don't think he did. No, when he lands on the <laughs> battlefield, he breaks them off, and then he uses them as claws, and he's just shoving them through people's jugulars. Which I was like, you took this from a very beloved movie. This is Braveheart. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, there's one part at the very... It's at the end of the movie when they're all at their funeral for Nemesis and Gunner. And then some kid, some random kid we've never seen. Like, they're all like, all right, we're going to go. We're going to find the princess. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And then she walks up and starts, like, like, real singing that song from far which plagues the whole film yep and it's like who let their random kid try to upstage the funeral (laughs) it was not nearly as poignant as i think zach thought it was (laughs) yeah (laughs) whatever is it worth watching them um if you're a film nerd yes if you're not and you haven't seen them i would say watch the director's cuts especially on like a rainy day yeah. They'll keep you entertained. The, but f- the first one's better than the second one, though. Yeah, you're going to walk away a little disappointed. Yes. Um, 
I give the whole thing a three out of five. Uh, generous. <laughs> Maybe five out of five. From, no, that's still too generous. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> okay, well, Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, the latest Marvel sensation. Was not good. You didn't like it? No, it's a great film. It's terrible, terrible story. Get it out of here. <laughs> it so is. It's so, I can see why everyone was like, don't, don't think this is the one. I, I, you were so hyped for it, I know, too. and I'm <laughs> just, I'm trying to digest the story, especially with Logan and Nova, Cassandra Nova, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I don't get it. What do you mean? Yeah. What What does that mean? It's just... The, Logan turn on them and kill them? It just feels very randomly put together. Yes. I I, I, I want to watch it again to see if like if it's as entertaining the second time. Because that was something when I watched Deadpool the first time, the mm-hmm. first movie. I thought it was great. The moment I watched it a second time and I knew the jokes and stuff, I was like, okay, beyond the jokes, this isn't as good as I remember it. No. Not as good as the first watch. No. Uh, the second one still reigns supreme. Yes. And... God, Wade is just so annoying. I know he's the merc with the mouth, but yeah, it just it, not all the time, dude. Just it, not all the time. Doesn't matter how many times you have characters in the movies telling you that you're talking too much, you're still talking too much. It's not just a cute reference; it's actually a problem sometimes. <laughs> uh, Wade is a terrible person as usual. Yeah. I thought Logan was better behaved than him. It, it, yeah. <laughs> a lot. It felt like a weird, like, resetting of his status quo. Like, he can't be happy with Vanessa, so they're arbitrarily broken up. So, wait. <laughs> is this our Wade? I don't... I think Is this so, another Wade? I think it's our Wade. I'm pretty sure... I, okay. I don't know. The I multiverse felt, thing's so weird. <laughs> I felt so robbed of... Uh, Cable and Domino. Yes. I really wanted them back. Or like even just like a cameo. Yeah, even just, if it's just like a smiling. Like a, yeah, anything. You could even just Photoshop them into the scene or something. <laughs> uh, I don't understand Paradox's thing. No, he was very lame, very boring. I don't because, like the TVA in general. Yeah, well, the TVA's got his muddy fingers all over that thing, mm-hmm. huh? And Paradox made no sense to me because all he really ended up doing was awakening. The consciousness of Wade. Yeah. Right? Which was the dumbest thing you could have done. Because what does Wade do? Mm -hmm. He gets a Wolverine. Yeah. Now, you have two indestructible bodies who are known to cause massive carnage. Yes. And they're pissed at you. That was not smart. And also, his whole gimmick, his thing is like he's doing this behind the TVA's back. Yeah, he should have just cut their cords and he would have never had to deal with it. And I'm just like, how does the TVA not know when things like this happen? Like, how, how? Their technology is so expansive, yet seemingly, like, a, a mislabeled Excel spreadsheet file is enough to send the whole of them into have disarray. You, have you seen the technology they use? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> um, very reliant on references. Super reliant. I can't believe you fell for... Chris Evans. There are going to be spoilers. Yeah, watch out for spoilers from here on out. I totally forgot. <laughs> I was like, oh, I wonder what kind of Captain America this will be. Yeah, you and you and Deadpool were all excited about this. <laughs> and I was just like, guys, calm down. Mm-hmm. It's not who you think it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, his vicious death. Jeez, mm-hmm. I did not need to see him die that way. We didn't stick around for the end credit scene. I think the end credit scene is them on their drive over there. And Johnny is actually saying all that stuff that Deadpool claimed he had said. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> there was a couple of references I didn't get. Like, like what? Well, okay. I've never watched Blade, so I don't know if anything he does or says is a reference that I should get, other than just his existence. Okay. There was one character hanging around Nova's lair. He was a tall fellow with a hammer with a red and white striped shirt. And they had, like, emphasis... They was like, the, one of the first ones we saw when we rolled on in. It was, like, him, and then you see Azazel, and then there's Juggernaut. And I'm like, who the fuck is... Where's Waldo over there? <laughs> I don't know who that character was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, if you guys know any of these characters, go ahead. We, we saw the obvious ones. Sabretooth. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. 
<laughs> Just because of how quick that was. I like that. Toad. Toad. Uh, Lady Deathstrike. Oh, Lady Deathstrike. <laughs> uh, Pyro. Hard to miss that one. Yeah. Uh, juggernaut. Oh, you're this year's Juggernaut. <laughs> it's super quotable. It was a very quotable movie. Oh, apparently um, Ryan Reynolds' family is in it. Apparently Ryan Reynolds' wife is Lady Deathstrike. And his... No, Lady Pool. Blake Lively plays Lady Pool. What'd I say? Deathstrike. Oh, um, I'd be sorry. <laughs> and his daughters play... One of them was Baby Pool. The one that was swearing? And No, that one was Kid Pool. That was his other daughter. Oh. So, that's cute. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> uh, Tom Holland's brother's in it. They didn't know they casted him. Tom Holland has a brother? Yeah. Who's his brother? He's one of the kids at the... At Isn't the... he in the Wasteland? I think he is. He might not be. He might be one of the other pools. But he's in there. I didn't know he had a brother. <laughs> they didn't know he had a brother either. <laughs> They're just like, oh my god. <laughs> um, oh my god. Hulk? Yeah, that was a nice little... That was adorable. Cute little tease. Reference to uh, this awesome plaque I have of the front cover of that uh, I, comic. I liked uh, comic size accurate Wolverine. Yep. <laughs> uh, c- Cavalverine? Cavalverine, yeah, Cavalrine. yeah, yeah. Yep. He was way too big to be Wolverine. It was a lot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was way too big. It was a lot of, like, if, if you know all the references, if you're passionate, you'll have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. If you don't know about the references, you're going to be lost and confused. Yes. <laughs> uh, X-23's in there. Yes. I thought that was cool. They spoiled her in a trailer. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. They, what was it? It was something about marketing, but... They knew the leaks were coming, so they just did it ahead of time. All right, well, uh, I've had Madonna stuck in my head for two days. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, soundtrack was fun. Mm-hmm. As usual. Goo Goo Dolls. Yes. Always a good pl- play right there. <laughs> Wolverine. Logan. Mm-hmm. I liked him. I get it. He's not my Logan. He's not my Wolverine. He's a totally different one. Mm-hmm. And he was still cool and fun. I loved... I hated... I hated his stance. I get it. That's his stance. Yes. Whenever he gets down. But when he charged Wade at some point, and he's digging his claws into the ground, yeah. coming at him like an animal, Yeah. I thought that was cool. I thought that was super cool. He, like, scurried up a car yeah. at one point. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be creepy. <laughs> yes. And then uh, when he puts on his mask... Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, so I already hated all the fan art. Or not fan art, but the the promotional art. And I was like, he looks weird. He still looks just as weird in the movie. With the yellow? It's not the yellow. There's something wrong with the shape of his head. Um, with the mask on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. I didn't like his eyes. And I know they're doing the same thing they did with Deadpool's eyes. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel like they just CG'd the whole mask. And I'm just like, surely they didn't CG the whole thing. Ryan Reynolds would know that when you CG a mask onto a character, it usually ends poorly. Yeah. Right, Green Lantern? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Did you guys like it? Because I did not like that. I it, it was he barely wore it. I, I I thought it was fine. Not a lot. Okay, a lot of the CG was pretty ugly. It was. Yeah, but I'm so used to it, especially with Marvel at this point, that I'm kind of, like, non-bothered, non plussed with it anymore. <laughs> Here's a question. When Deadpool and Wolverine are fighting the 100 Deadpools, yeah, and they get pushed off screen, and then they come back and they're pushing against all the Deadpools, mm-hmm. and Wade is behind his thigh pushing him forward, uh-huh. while Wolverine is stabbing the ones in front of him, Yes. is that Berserker Barrage? What's Berserker Barrage? What the f- Marvel vs. Capcom fake fan. Oh, I I never- sorry. Berserker Barrage! And then he just comes at you and you just start stabbing? Probably. It's his forward dash attack? I've never played it. And he does it in the comics. It's like, every good fighter calls out their move. And that's true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> I lost Wade during that sequence. And so I saw- I was watching one that I thought was our Deadpool. Yeah. And then he died. And I was like, mm, I don't think that's ours. <laughs> I think ours just, like, ran away at some point. Maybe. Um, it was fun to watch them just slaughter everybody. Mm-hmm. 
and then find out they can all regenerate, except for <laughs> except for nice pool. <laughs> nice pool. <laughs> all right, all right, buddy. How long does it usually take you to regenerate? Regenerate? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're gonna live. <laughs> They killed him. He died by murder. He died by murder, you dumb fuck. <laughs> it was very funny. Like, like I'll give it that. I, I love that he used him as a body shield to get across and the then, street. And then Wolverine just walks across with the dog, <laughs> like, dog all <pool>. casually. <laughs> it was so. It was very funny. I'll give like like of all critiques. Yeah, the story was super bland. It's bad, but it's very funny. A very funny movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, where does it go from here? I I don't know. I don't either. The, I know Ryan Reynolds made that joke about Wolverine, and they're like, "Yeah, Fox tried to kill him, and then Disney brought him back, and now this guy has to play him for ninety years." He's gonna be doing this till you're ninety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand it was a joke, but is it? <laughs> are you I'm, guys gonna be stuck doing this for a while my biggest thing is i'm really not since i've only been using the multiverse for like cameos and i was thinking about it there was um no way home where yep. we have the multiverse and it's look at these actors from your childhood getting to play these characters you remember mm-hmm. and then Doctor Strange and the multiverse of madness and it was look at these look at these actors from your childhood And they get to play, like, Xavier, he gets to play this character that you remember him as. And now here with this one, it's, again, look at this actor from your childhood. And I'm like, it was neat. It's starting to lose its appeal. I want story, not cameos. Yes. (laughs) It made sense for this film because it is a goodbye to Fox. Yeah. And... There's a whole little behind-the-scenes thing they did at the end. It was so cute seeing baby, baby Ryan Reynolds being all excited to play Deadpool for the first time. I liked... Uh, in Wolverine Origins. <laughs> I liked Hugh talking about being on set for the X-Men. Mm-hmm. And how everyone's like, is this the guy who's supposed to be the big guy? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, it's funny that he felt insecure at that moment. Yeah. Only to see that this is the... This is it. Mm -hmm. You are Wolverine. It's so hard to remember that, yeah, before X-Men, he was the song and dance dude. Yes. (laughs) I like the (laughs) (laughs) X-Men. I'm excited for the X-Men, and yes, there was lots of mutants. Blade. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh my god. So there's some things about Blade. I don't know too much about Blade either, besides being a daywalker. He uses guns and knives and his sword. Yeah, he's Wesley um, Snipes. I know that. <laughs> and I loved it when one of the bad guys shot him. Yeah. Because he just took it and then pulled out his pistol, uh-huh. which the guy hit him with a rifle. He pulled out his pistol and just shot him, yeah. killed him right there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that is so awesome because he would be proficient with weapons like that. Mm-hmm. When he has the rocket launcher and they're coming in, he goes, I'm Blade, and there'll be only one Blade. And then the camera slowly goes down to Deadpool, and mm-hmm. he's just staring at us with these wide eyes. Like, uh huh. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds has said that he would love to do another Deadpool movie with Wesley Snipes as Blade. Wow, really? And I was like, that would be another fun, weird, like, maybe if we got the story right, or maybe. we just don't care about the story anymore. I mean, I don't even know. I, I don't know. Like,. Uh... Dead, it's it's a conflicted thing because like Deadpool works really well with like random wackadoo stories like this where it's basically just a set piece as an excuse for certain gags to happen. Yeah, he'd be fighting vampires. But also, we've seen Deadpool do very well with emotionally driven moments. Even in Deadpool and Wolverine, there's some emotional moments. Yeah. And so... The, the car. Yes. Everyone loves the car scene. I don't think it's phenomenal acting, but it is good. I really liked the fight. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool and creative. I did like the way that they tucker themselves out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? No, the Odyssey totally fucks. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a meme. Have you seen where people are doing the horse? They did it for Venom. Yeah, and it was just a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Odyssey. <laughs> I, it was such a subtle joke. I didn't get it initially until like later in the movie. But he was talking about the Honda Odyssey when they found it, 
and about like its specs and everything. And then later I was like, oh yeah, he became like a car salesman. Yeah, yeah that's why he knows all about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Doug. Doug? Wait, was it Doug? Peter. Peter. Oh yes. my god. Peter Pool. Peter Pool. <laughs> With his huge dick. <laughs> Did you notice? <laughs> yeah. It was it was him telling him about the getting piercings on your nipples connected down to your Yeah. yeah. And then at the party they're like tugging on <laughs> You're like, what the hell? I've seen people saying that that Peter is replacing weasel yeah and i'm like i say upgrade (laughs) that is a massive upgrade Mm -hmm. oh man i'm glad weasel wasn't in it i was reading about him Mm -hmm. nothing good Mm -mm. um he got out of the shenanigans that got him fired from deadpool Mm -hmm. but then he went off to do other crazy shit as as they do (laughs) yeah Uh, i think he's getting like mental evaluation right now Mm -hmm. which i was like great uh, so Weasel is not missed. No. But I'm going to be honest, I never really found him all that interesting or entertaining in, to begin with. Yeah. With the first few films. Mm-hmm. Everyone else outshined him in every regard. Yeah. More Dopinder. <laughs> uh, the movie was good. It did not bring back faith for the uh, MCU for me. No. It was just a fun one-off thing. It was. It didn't even feel like the MCU. Uh, no. Another big gripe I have with it is everything felt like a set. And mm. you're going to go, Rambo, it's a movie. Everything's a set. No, 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 no. When you watch good movies, mm-hmm. you feel like you're in the environment. Yeah. You are encapsulated in that room or you're standing on that field. Mm-hmm. When you watch Deadpool and Wolverine... You can clearly tell where the set ends mm-hmm. and where the wall or the real world begins. It's This has been a thing plaguing the MCU for a while now. Yes. And I feel like it's at its worst here. Mm-hmm. Like it's real stage play-esque, you know? Yeah. They just go out to like... And like you can tell when they're in the real world, like when they're standing in like... The desert. Yeah, but just the desert outside of Hollywood. <laughs> but, like, I wish they played around with, like, real-world settings more. Mm-hmm. I think about, you know, Iron Man. There was a lot of real settings in that one. <laughs> yeah, they went out in the desert and filmed that. Mm-hmm. He's driving on the freeway. Yeah. Yeah, so, I didn't like that studio feel that I gave. Mm-hmm. You know, the lighting was not Marvel lighting, weirdly enough. No. And I was like, this is the time to benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have this controlled environment. Yeah. So it didn't really feel like an MCU film. Um, Like I said, it feels like a spinoff. I'm going to say they missed out on the opportunity for a joke. Because they have Happy Hogan in it. Yes. Um, Which, by the way, I wanted to point this out. hmm. Why him and not anyone else? Because he... Played Foggy and Deadpool. I was gonna say they so missed. So it's also a reference to the Fox universe. I was gonna say they missed an opportunity to have him like, and maybe he may have said it in the beginning when he was talking to him. But I, I was gonna say they missed the opportunity to more directly reference Foggy. I don't think they were referencing Foggy at all. Mm, they should have. <laughs> yeah, but that was the point of why he's there. No, there was a point when he was talking to Happy Hogan about being an Avenger. A whole huge group of people entered the theater oh my God. right in front of us, all in that moment. So True it was, story. It was a little distracting. <laughs> so we we got the fun crowd again, just like uh, Guardians, mm-hmm. where um, they laughed at all the trailer scenes. Yes. And yes. they got the most uh, intense baggage on their candy. Oh what I mean God. is just crinkle, crinkle, crackle, crinkle, 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 the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of standing up and walking over to other people to like open their bags for them. Yep. Uh, we're going to go later in the day next time. Yes. To like try to avoid. <laughs> well, I was also like, there's a taco shop nearby and it's Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just go later at night and have dinner? And every time we go out, it's taco Tuesday. Heck yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> And then maybe we could avoid that. Though, watching it with them, 
and them moving around and making noise. Mm -hmm. It also allowed me to realize that I don't need to watch this film under my critical lens. Yeah. I could take a moment to walk away from that, (laughs) which was nice. Um, I noticed that I was doing the critical lens too much. It starts to change my thought. Mm -hmm. And something I've been picking up a lot on, especially because of Rebel Moon, is bad blocking. Yes. And... um, editing between scenes of blocking Mm -hmm. where if a character stands up in one shot or is beginning to stand up and then the character is beginning to stand up still Mm -hmm. but from a different spot or perspective yeah or if you show a character in the background and then when you show a wide they're standing next to them yeah that kills me it rips me out of the film really quickly i it definitely took me a while to like learn to like like, I can watch something, and I will have, like, regular enjoyment, but yes. then I can turn on critical mode if I need to talk about it critically, mm-hmm. and then I can go back to, like, regular enjoyment. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, the Batman. Mm-hmm. I went in there critical, yeah. and I walked away pleased. That it's very, so well done. That very rarely happens. <laughs> yes, it, it's a masterpiece on its own. Deadpool had some issues. Especially when they're at the uh, the base. Yes. Um, because there's so many actors. Azazel, I'll tell you this, Azazel pissed me off really quickly at the very final fight. Because he's shown in a lineup standing next to Colossus, I believe. I think and it was Juggernaut. The other one. Yes, <laughs> the other big guy. <laughs> and then um, when they're finally getting ready to fight after doing all the talking, mm-hmm. he... Like, it's just Azazel, he vanishes, and then reappears back in that spot. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, why? Why did we do that? I saw you do this. I guess juke you out. And it's like, I'm going to vanish. No, I yeah, didn't. Yeah, he vanished sure behind and threw re-vanish in front. <laughs> I did. Okay. Yeah. Um, so weird things like that. The dance video at the beginning was kind of fun. Yeah. I didn't know Ryan Reynolds was willing to learn all those moves. Oh, he didn't. That's not him? No. <laughs> they got a professional dancer to do it. Oh, well, there's they did a great the, job. There's, yes, there's behind the scene footage of it. It's very cool. Okay. No, Ryan Reynolds did not do it. I'm, I'm sure he did some shots, but yeah. all the like intricate parts, no. <laughs> um, there's nothing to really say about X-23. I'm glad she's back. She barely did anything. She had like two lines. She cut Juggernaut's legs off. I guess, and then yeah. took his head. I mean, I guess she moved and did actions, but like character moment wise, she, she didn't got, really do a lot. She got to Logan. She, she talked to him that one time, I suppose. Yeah. <sighs> You're never the right guy. But he is. <laughs> um, Electra, I have nothing to say. Yeah, she was there. She did her thing. I was on Twitter yesterday. Yeah. I was looking at Ryan Reynolds' Twitter because he was, like, talking about working with everybody. Yeah. And uh, only the highest of praise for her. Yeah, he said she had a black belt and nice. Yeah. She was, like, one of the nicest people. And I was like, you know what? That's nice. That's lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Blade was fun. Yeah. And then we got to talk about <sighs> Gambit. I didn't know that was his accent. <laughs> <laughs> i don't really remember him in the old cartoon he's there he, he's the partner of rogue i'm sure he was there mm-hmm. i only had eyes for cyclops <laughs> okay so i did not pay attention to gambit <laughs> uh, so gambit first appeared in live action in x-men origins wolverine Oh, yeah, he did. He has a small side part. Yeah. Um, They wanted to make more X-Men Origins films. Yeah. But because how bad Wolverine was, they killed that idea and rebooted the whole thing, which is first class. Mm -hmm. They never let go of the idea of doing a solo film of just Gambit. Because of the reception towards the original guy, Mm -hmm. they decided to head in a different direction. And the hot boy toy of that summer was Channing Tatum. Woo! I'm talking about early to mid 2010s. Yeah. This is when they were really talking about it. Fox was still its own thing. Mm-hmm. And they kept working on it. They're like, no, Channing Tatum's going to play Gambit. We're going to make a movie. And obviously nothing ever came of it. So for him to come and play Gambit mm-hmm. was kind of a um, 
fuck you to Fox. It was a really big deal. Yes. Uh, and to get him to actually come back and play the character. Mm-hmm. And according to Ryan Reynolds' tweets that I was looking at, mm-hmm. apparently Channing Tatum just is all about getting to play Gambit. Yes. He's wanted to do this for so long. Yep. And that's cool. So he got his chance. Now, Gambit, the way Channing Tatum looks to Gambit, yes, he looks like the comic book counterpart. Yeah. You're right, they got his eyes wrong. Yes. Which um, I noticed immediately and was annoyed by. <laughs> I noticed he pulled out his staff at some point, which yeah. I was like, why didn't we show that off when we're showing off him doing his cool card trick thing? Isn't his staff just made out of his cards? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, well, isn't it just his cards, like, kind of stretched out in a slightly staff-sized shape? I'm, I think that's the way he does it. <laughs> but it would have been cool to see him pull it out. Yeah. Seeing that it's Channing Tatum in that costume mm-hmm. pulled me out right away. It, I, I can't do it. I see Channing Tatum cosplaying as Gambit. I think it didn't help that the costume, while it was very comic book accurate. Yes. Um, it Because it's so comic book accurate, it tends to feel costumey that way. Yep. It's a very fine line. He did a good job. Like, of the three characters... Sorry, four. I keep forgetting X-23 was there. <laughs> of the four characters, he was the most entertaining out of them. That's because you never saw him. I guess. Well, also, he had the most interesting... He had a great joke where they were like, you know, they showed up at our door and killed us off. And then he goes, or killed us before we were born. I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that was a reference to his movie never being made. <laughs> so, yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine was fun. I enjoyed it. That is Coffee Break. What are you doing this week? Oh, wait, hold on. One more thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, question last week. Robert Downey Jr. returned to MCU as Doctor Doom. Overwhelmingly, people said no. <laughs> yes. Um, for those of you who said yes, we'll find out. But w- one of the listeners here, he brought up something to me that I did not realize. Hmm. Is that this story will not be about Reed Richards versus Doctor Doom. Yeah. Which should be the way it goes. Because Robert Downey is playing Doctor Doom... Peter Parker will probably think that he is Iron Man or like Iron Man, and then he'll lose trust, and the story will actually be Peter versus Doctor Doom. You know what that is? It's giving Black Adam wants to fight Superman, not Shazam. You know? What do you mean? It's like that mentality of this hero and this villain, rather than the villain fighting their hero that they're supposed to be against. Yeah. We're going to have them fight this other person because that one's more popular. The thing is, I can see money-wise, Peter Parker fighting Doctor Doom is a sure banger. Sure. I mean, he does hang out with the Fantastic Four. Yes. But we haven't shown off the Fantastic Four in a good light. Mm -hmm. Every time they make a movie, it's been terrible. Like I keep saying, everything else is like already overshadowing the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Both and... now now Peter Parker is getting thrown into the mix. Yep. We haven't even gotten the Fantastic Four yet. And we're talking about Peter and and Tony again. <laughs> I know. Well, inevitably we have to talk about Tony mm-hmm. because of the casting. So, what is the question this week? Um Deadpool or Wolverine? We already did that. Oh, did we? Yes. Oh, we did. (laughs) Do it again. Do it again. But more. Now that you've seen the movie. (laughs) Um, I don't know. How about something about uh, Batman? About new villains that introduced in Cape Crusader. Which one do you like? Of all the villains? Yeah. Okay. Well, how many people watched the Cape Crusader? <laughs> Good question. You know what? I'm not going to do a question this week. Okay. Just because I can't think of one and there's no reason to really have one. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got one. <laughs> I got one. What, what is it? You asked me this the other day. For those of you who saw Rebel Moon, what is the best quote from Rebel Moon? Oh. This is a near impossible question to answer because there are no good quotes. No. They barely talk, and when they do, it's just exposition. (laughs) 
Oh, the dog woke up. <laughs> great. Well, that's the end of the podcast. Don't forget to answer the question. You guys, have a great week. Mm-hmm. Um, I did that Rebel Moon review. I'm doing another review for next week for a movie coming out next week. I'm excited. Um, I have more projects lined up, mm-hmm. but... Oh, uh, Stellar Blade, part nine. Guys, watch it. It's way cooler than the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I chose that thumbnail because I didn't want to show anything that was really cool that was happening. Don't want to spoil. This is when the game, like, shot out and grabbed my heart and said, no, you need to know this game. (laughs) And I was like, this is awesome. Nice. Go ahead. Oh, I have a lightning review for Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, It's for patrons already. Uh, it'll be up on YouTube tomorrow, so by the day, time this podcast comes out. Yep. Uh, going back to my Nuzlocke on Friday, I'm nervous. I think I'm gonna lose. <laughs> I think Melanie's gonna kill me. Nice. <laughs> and episode nine of Ruby Reversed Fates, the second to last episode. It's a big one. It's an exciting one. Uh, I'm excited. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. You got some stuff to do. Um... I hope you guys have a good weekend. Stay cool for those of you in school. Do your homework. Yep. Do your homework. Don't procrastinate. God. You always say at the beginning of the school year you're not going to procrastinate, and then you always do. And make friends. Yeah. <laughs> and learn to poop in public. <laughs> that was my thing. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.